Pimela, let us look at this um, activity here. We are given information and the first point tells us about inventories of cellular phones, the stock where as follows at the beginning and end of the financial year. Um, the beginning of the financial year obviously here is the 1st of January 2011. We had 450 units, each unit cost 530. And the total value for that was 238,500. At the end of the financial year, which is the 31st of December 2011, we had 280 units. But now we don't know what the per unit value is of those 280 units. In this question here, we are using first in, first out. They said purchases of cellular phones during the financial year ended the 31st of December 2011. The following stock items were purchased. And note that they're giving us the number of units purchased, their value per unit, as well as carriage. Note that carriage will be included into the cost price of each item. That's why we have the total carriage, 18,000. The total purchases is 330,000. You're going to add the two. It'll give us the total cost of purchases. Um, and then they said, um, I won't mind the purchases for now. And then they said, Returns of cellular phones. Some Zanzi traders were not happy with the price of the purchases on the 30th of June. So we know that on 30th of June, we purchased 900 cellular phones. So we were not happy with those. Therefore, they returned 100 cellular phones to the supplier. The supplier created them with the cost price of each item, excluding the courage. Remember, once you have spent money on your courage, you won't get it back, okay? But the least you can get back is the cost of the item that you purchase. And nowadays, suppliers make you pay for your own transportation anyway. They make you look for an external um, courier to, to transport your goods. So it has nothing to do with the supplier. That's why when you return goods, they won't reimburse you for transportation costs. Then they gave us sales of cellular phones. We had 2,270 units at 900 each. So we sold those cellular phones for, and we made 2,043,000. Okay, first in, first out. Note that these are the number of units that are left, okay? These are the number of units that are left at the end of the financial year. It is 280 units, but we don't know their value. But because we're using first in, first out, this is what you need to understand with first in, first out. You only look at the last purchases and that's where the value of your closing stock will come from. Um, please check out the previous video where I explain thoroughly what first in, first out is. And I also have an introduction video where I show you a... Um, and it's, um, it's simply a thorough explanation of what first in, first out and different valuation methods. Now, first in, first out, we have 280 units. So all those 280 units, we always look at the last purchase, which happened on the 30th of November. We purchased 200 units. Were any of those units returned? And the answer is no. So all those 200, and unit, 200 units made it to be part of your closing stock. Now, we have 280, we still need 80 units because um, 200 comes from the last pitches. It makes sense that you look at the second last pitches, which is 500 units. Of that 500 units, we need only 80 of those, okay? If these two, um, let's say our closing stock was like 800. So 200 was, go was going to come from the November purchases, 500 was going to come from the September purchases, and then the other 100 was going to come from the June purchases. So, so in this case, I didn't even need to look at the June purchases. I stopped at the September purchases because I only needed 80 units of the September purchases. When you value the stock of September purchases, Please consider this and that. So that is your total cost of purchasing stock. Grade 10. The cost of stock is determined by the purchase price plus any directly attributable cost. All the costs that you incur to bring the stock to conditions ready for it to be sold. Okay. That's why we have to include transportation costs. All right. Um, let us move on.
how do we account for this? Okay. We know that this is our opening balance. We purchase, we purchase, we purchase, and of the June, we minus um, 100 because 100 cellular phones were returned from the June ones and we purchased the November one. Closer stock will be determined by the 30th of November one, 200 of those and the cost price per unit was 620 and um, transportation was 30. So the value of those 200 units, of the 280, 200 units will, um, will cost us that value that was given to us over there, which is 130,000. And of that, 80 of that will come from the September purchases. And September purchases, we will simply have 80 units, all right? And the unit cost of those 80 units will be 530, include transportation of 30 rand, and that will give us 44,800. When you add 44,800, it'll give us the total value of our closing stock, which is 174,800. That is what we were looking for. The value of 800 of those 280 units will be 174,800, okay? When you calculate cost of sales, you will simply take the value of your opening stock, which was 238,500, plus your purchases of 1,259,000, minus your returns, which was 600, um, 60,000, and you add your purchases as well. Um, in this case, actually, it's not purchases, it's carriage on purchases. And then you minus the value of your closing stock that we determined in the previous slide. The cost of sales figure will be 1,328,000, okay? You will know that everything comes from here. All right. That 66,000 represents carriage on purchases. That 1,259,000, I took it all from this table, it represents your total purchases for the year. And so basically, when you calculate your total purchases for the year, it'll be, um, I will start with cost of sales. You take opening stock plus all purchases for the year, plus coverage on purchases, then you minus the returns. The returns will be, um, of this 900, the returns will simply be 100 units, but you multiply those 100 units by 600. 100 times 600 will give you um, 60,000. That's why we minus the 60,000. And then you subtract the cost of goods um, that we determined from the previous slide and the cost of closing stock that is, um, which will be 174,800. So when you calculate the value of your cost of sales, it's opening stock plus purchases minus returns plus carriage on purchases minus the value of your closing stock. It will give us a cost of sales figure of 1,328,700. Now to calculate the markup, you will first find your gross profit. You were given sales, gross profit and sales minus cost of sales. Sales was 2,043,000, cost of sales was 1,328,700. We just determined it now. It will give you 714,300. That 714,300, when you divide it by cost of sales, it will give you a markup. Your markup will be 50. 53.8%. Okay. Please, um, I have already prepared on a video on weighted average cost method. Um, these are just the notes relating to weighted average cost method. Okay. I just want you to determine all the variables there, which is A, B, and all the question marks, and then determine the value of your closing stock. Okay. Um, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thank you. Again, I see that Pretoria is the leading when it comes to the views. I really appreciate it, Pretoria and Cape Town. Thank you so much for always checking out my videos. And thank you for subscribing. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, let's do this thing. Let's just make accounting easy. Hotzo.